I'm trying to keep it straight, GB1. It's a little challenging. Well, actually, I asked for an N64 controller, and this is an Xbox One controller. I'm a Rogue Squadron veteran. Oh, it's no big deal. We'll get it switched out a little bit later. And uh, plus, our friends are here. Hey, everyone, and welcome to Group Builders, the show where we create together. I'm your host, Disorderly Cone, and that droid in the back there is GB1. We were just test piloting our brand new Zori's Y-Wing fighter from the Metal Earth Rise of Skywalker collection, and it's proving to be a little bit difficult, much like the build itself. Well, that's right. A lot of builders out there are absolutely loving the new Star Wars models with all of their new detail. But with that new detail comes a lot of complexity. In this episode, we're going to look at all the little bits that you might want to know before building your own Y-Wing fighter, and of course answer, does this build get the Groove Builder's seal of approval? Well, that's actually a really good question. Let's get started on the workbench. Groove Builders, welcome to the workbench. We have our Metal Earth Star Wars Zori's Y-Wing Fighter, and I am so excited to finally be holding a Y-Wing in my hand from Metal Earth. This has definitely been long awaited, and now that I'm holding it in my hand, looking at all this detail, I think we're gonna be in for quite a build. Groovers, let's go ahead and take a look at the back. On the back, we get a brief look at our model, followed by a QR code we can scan to get a 360 look at our build. This will come in handy when we're putting different parts of detail onto our build. On the right here, we get some instructions on how to build our model. And finally, at the bottom, we get a look at some other models in the series. Hey, look, there's Dio. All right, Groovers, let's go ahead and open up our package. We have our instructions and we have our three sheets of metal. Let's take a quick little look at them here. It's our small guy. Awesome, awesome. Oh boy, look at all of these parts that we have to form. That detail and color looks really good too. With all of these parts, we're bound to have a lot of instructions. Let's take a closer look. Wow, a whole seven pages worth of detail and some pretty interesting shapes to bend here too. No wonder so many builders out there are having such a hard time. I can already see some things that we should take a closer look at. Don't worry though, we got this. Let's start with the basics. First things first, these metal models require us to cut out our pieces, then shape them using whatever we can. Once we have our parts correctly shaped, we can connect them together by bending and twisting our tabs. The way we bend or twist our tabs is indicated in the instructions by the circles and triangles. Personally, I try to follow the instructions the first time when it comes to bending our tabs, if I can. Then, when the build is complete, I'll go over everything again and change anything that might stand out. I try to make my tabs as invisible as possible. That's how you get that museum quality you hear so much about. Next up, tools. Drum roll please! For this build, I recommend detailed tweezers pliers, nippers, and something to help you form some different size cylinders and cones. I use my dapping set and mandrels for my cylinders along with Animate Orange's tools for my cones. They worked great. If you're looking for tools, links are in the description down below. Now these are just my recommendations and you really don't need anything but tweezers and nippers to complete these builds. But of course, having the right tools definitely helps especially with these detailed builds like this. All right, we've looked at our instructions and we have our tools. There's only one more thing left to do. I, I really need you to press the like button to stabilize the Y-Wing. Just do me a favor, press the freaking like button. Thank you. All right, let's continue on with the build. The first thing that we need to talk about when it comes to building this fighter is all of the small pieces to form and attach to parts one and 23. That's the bottom and top of our Y-Wing, where we will be spending a lot of our time with this build. The good news? Most of this detail is pretty straightforward and box-like. All we need to do is bend the pieces right at the fold lines and match up the edges accordingly. Like in part 3 here, we bend the edges of the piece that are attached first, then match up the borders with the loose metal so we have no seams. Some of the detail is kind of hard to get shaped correctly because it's either too thin or small. Parts 32 and 33 are great examples. These parts look like wires and are complicated to get formed correctly without warping them. If you have some detailed tweezers, I recommend using the insides of the tweezers to help you get a nice shape. 
you could also use multiple tweezers too, as long as you get a straight box shape. Unlike some metal models, the Y-Wing requires us to be accurate with our shapings, especially because everything's being attached so close together. If you find a part won't go into an area, double check your work. Some of the pieces in this kit look a lot alike but are different in small ways. If the piece still won't go in, the insertion hole could be blocked by another tab. Make sure to always bend your tabs away from unused insertion holes when you can. That tip will save you a lot of heartache with this build. The second thing we need to take a look at is these boosters in the back. That's parts 55, 67, 68, and 69. I've heard and seen some builders out there having a really hard time getting the shaping right here. Some builders don't even bother trying. The secret to this part of the build is the better the cylinder shape, the easier it will be to work with. Using part 63 as your guide to know how much to bend the part works great. Personally, I like rolling my parts to get a nice shape. If you try this method at home, the trick is to apply even pressure across the tool while pressing it down into the piece. Make sure the surface you're pressing down on has some give, like my mouse pad here, or even a phone book, so the part can bend around your tool when you press down. I always start with light pressure first, and then slowly add more pressure to get the shape I want. This method also works great for cone shapes like with part 60 and 61. Speaking of those, you'll need to be very careful from now on adding parts to your Y-Wing because details like part 56 bend super easily with barely a touch. If you do accidentally hit this part a couple of times, some quick tactical bends will fix it. Just be careful not to warp the metal. Lastly, with our boosters, when it comes to putting our details on the inside, attach the tabs closer to the cockpit first, then roll the metal over the outer tab. Trying this method should make things a little easier for you and of course make your booster connection a better experience. Finally, let's talk about our cockpit. The Y-Wing cockpit is a pretty unique shape with some small details to be formed. Just like with our boosters, we're going to be rolling parts 75 and 81, but only on the edges to match the seams for 74 and 78. Use these parts as your guide to form the cockpit correctly. With the next couple of parts, pre-bending your tabs to get them into place is a great idea to save time. To pre-bend your tabs, simply bend one tab 90 degrees and the other between 60 and 70. Insert the 90 degree tab first and the second one should pretty much fall into place. Once you have all the detail attached, it's time to make sure that the edges of 75 and 81 fit well together. If the cockpit looks like it's pulling apart, bend the edges on the outside a little bit more. You want the cockpit to sit well together when it's resting so that when you secure the tabs, they stay closed. Gaps are super noticeable here on the front. Rush it and you might have what looks like a giant space clam on your hands. Take your time and you'll have a really nice Y-Wing fighter like this. Okay, this was quite the mountain to climb, both with building and flying. And now for the most important part. Does Zori's Y-Wing Fighter from the Metal Earth Rise of Skywalker collection get the Groove Builder seal of approval? Ma, ah, yes it does. And it gets it for quite a few reasons. The Metal Earth team has done a fantastic job this year with listening to the community in terms of what we've been wanting. A lot of us out there have been asking for more colored models and to have more detail in them as well. Well, the Y-Wing here is a great example of what everyone has been wanting. Not only is there tons of detail for us to form here, but the coloring on the detail really looks nice. Not to mention the fact that most builders out there put magnets into their stands to be able to take their ships on and off of them. But with this new setup, there's no magnets required because these come off really easy. I mean, this just sits on top here and uh, you can make it uh, bend out a little bit to hold it better, but that's really awesome. And I really do think it's the little details like this that have made this series so nice. But with all of this new small added detail, it adds a new layer of complexity which is great for experienced metal model builders out there, but might be a little bit too much for the new ones out there. And that's why I really can't recommend this build for new builders out there. I would definitely recommend trying some other builds before coming to this one. There is some shapings here which might turn you off the hobby altogether, especially with the back boosters. 
All right, Groove Builders, that brings us to the end of our show. I really did enjoy building the Y-Wing with you, and if you guys had a good time, don't forget to press that like button. For more videos like this, hit subscribe as well, as we got all kinds of cool content coming out in the future. Of course, if you're looking to build the Y-Wing yourself and want some more instruction, check out my full build right here. Until next time, Groove Builders, keep building. Now, I'm gonna go put this next to my Millennium Falcon. Awesome.